Hello again, thank you very much for joining me. Today I am going to attempt to paint some pineapples for my seven into summer prompts. I am a little bit challenged by the thought, I have to admit. I'm gonna be going back to using a bit of ink to define some of the shapes. I normally work quite loose, but I think today is going to be a challenge and I really wanted you to see how I cope when I'm faced with something a little bit more uh, out of my comfort zone. Even though pineapple is a fruit, there are a lot of different elements to it. So let's see how it goes. Today I've decided to use my Curateke watercolours because I am bringing in some ink and I want the watercolours to be more expressive. In the other videos I've used Winsor & Newton but I find that these give greater cauliflowering or backflow effects. So I'm going to pick out a few of these colours for today's pineapple. Colours I'm going to use today are lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, sap green and lime green. I have a layout in my mind and I want a cut pineapple here, so cut in half and I'm going to start off by applying a little bit of the uh, lemon yellow wash. Uh, this pineapple reference that I've got is um, from a stock library and it's quite a small um, round-ish watermelon because um, I, I want to fit a, another one in a little bit further up. So I'm going to start off by applying uh, a lemon yellow wash in a shape of the watermelon and then I'm going to add some of the cadmium yellow here. I can't see exact markings like this but it's, I know when I've cut open a pineapple myself, this is kind of what it looks like. Now I'm going in with the cadmium orange, just on the very edges there. And I didn't pick out a brown, but I feel like I should have. Um, I didn't want to muddy it too much, so I'll pick out brown in a little bit. Um, I'm not outlining um, the, the pineapple as such, just adding uh, the pigment to just a few areas here and there. This is the definitely the easier option to start with. Um, it's the skin of the watermelon, not the watermelon. Have I been saying watermelon all this time? I'm really sorry, pineapple. We are painting pineapple. <laughs> I'm really, really sorry. Um, I, I've been up since half six um, doing food illustration for clients, so maybe I'm a little bit tired. Hold on, let me move this down. Uh, I want to start. Oh, <laughs> it was dripping off my brush. Uh, the spiky green parts. And again, I, I really, I will stop some of my overwhelm if I concentrate on the shape. Um, the best way to do that is just to squint rather than thinking, oh my God, there's all these spiky leaves. I'm, I'm just going to try and work out the shape of this the silhouette almost of these spiky parts just to begin with and i'm just using lemon yellow to sort of give me an outline and an impression of it uh, so that i don't uh, start going to that place like i can't do this I, I don't like pineapples right let's just do this really quickly and then i'll start dropping in a bit of green And again, it's just a really, really light wash. If I start with the, the lime green, so the lighter of the greens, and just introduce it to a few sections, and then I can go in with the sap green and let it mix on the page. Okay, now let's introduce a bit of the sap green. So the sap green is going to, I'm going to be putting it where if I squint, I see the darker shades where it, where it, they attach themselves. 
Oh, but not, not too close to the central area here, which is still very light. I might just leave it like that because I'm going to resort back to using ink. Um, so I'm only giving an impression of it. Actually, I, I, was, I know I mentioned about using brown, um, finding a brown watercolour, but I can actually use brown ink um, to pick out the edges of this watermelon. And now I want to move on to the trickier version, which is the, the, the skin with the, all the bumps. Um, actually, before I leave this one, because it's just at this um, lovely time where it's start, just starting to soak in the orange. I think on this side, I added it when it was just, it's just spread out too much and I want to reintroduce some of this type of patterning. Lovely. All right, so let's try the tricky version now. Now for this version, I think I'm going to start off with the, a base of the cadmium yellow and it's the same sort of basic shape. Just a wash again and I will start dropping in um, the orange and I will pick out details using ink line. Um, that's one of the tricks that I've taught myself when I um, was learning how to become better food illustrator was to, um, if I concentrated on the characteristics of each food, the, the defining characteristics, let's say, um, you know, it was a tomato. So it's basically round and also it's got a green stalk on top. And if I just, I know the tomatoes are, are quite simplistic, if I just left it, said that to myself in my head, it it was just so much easier. I, I want to make this easy on myself. Got a bit of cadmium orange. And this side has dried significantly faster, so um, I'm not going to get this sort of effect that I've just you've just seen happening here. I don't know why it has dried faster. Maybe because it, it's quite a sunny day here when I'm recording this. I do actually have a Skillshare class where I talk about how atmospheric conditions will affect your watercolours and it's in your interest to, to know how your watercolours will behave under certain conditions. Well, I think it's important to know that. Uh, one feedback I got was, it's very boring. Which is valid. If she found it boring, they found it boring. But I really enjoy that, that kind of aspect. Um, right, I don't want to spoil things, but I do want to add the, just the nearest, nearest hint of green because I can see it just in a few sections. And I'm hoping that... Um, because there is still it damp that it will merge slightly so i'm not doing massive washes i'm hoping that it will merge and um, once it dries it will um, give a, a lovely sort of textural effect oh my cat's just arrived um drop in a little bit of the cadmium yellow in a few places because there doesn't seem to be quite enough contrast happening Adding ink details is my preferred way of working, for sure. Only because I, I'm able to control ink much better than I'm able to control watercolours. Uh, I, I, as you know, as you can see, I work very loosely in watercolours. Again, using the, the lime green and concentrating on the shape. Don't worry about the spiky parts. And I have to give myself little pep talks like that. Actually, I might add a tiny bit of lemon yellow to my brush. We are now on the fourth day of the prompt and I'm kind of um, getting used to chatting along while I paint. 
um, I've been receiving some really great feedback on my videos um, that comments sorry there's an awful lot of cat hairs just floated into f the frame I don't know oh. <laughs> perks of being a cat owner and I, I'm absolutely thrilled and, and I've got lots of different ideas for future YouTube videos and please put any suggestions that you might have for YouTube videos that you'd like me to create in the comments and I will try my best to um, work on those in, in the coming weeks and months. Um, I find that being on YouTube like this, it, it's just really enjoyable. I can take my time. I might do time-lapse process videos in future, but I, I quite like painting in real time and showing you my process and sharing what I'm thinking at any given time. So I do think um, rather than it stopping dead here, um, I think I need to merge a bit of green into the body of the pineapple and it's a little bit too um, narrow here. This side in particular is very dark and I'm still only using the colours that I showed you right at the beginning, so that's only five colours. And I'll be introducing uh, ink in a little bit. I think we need a tiny bit more lime green up here. Oh, lovely. And I'm really glad I've chosen the Curateke watercolours because they just have a beautiful, brilliant effects and I much prefer it to um, Winsor & Newton when I'm working like this or when I'm working with collages just because of the effects it creates. I'm going to pause the video now because I need to let this dry otherwise the ink is going to run all over this. Be back soon. This is the ink I'm going to be using today. It's Nut Brown by Winsor & Newton and this is the nib. It's called uh, Blue Pumpkin by browser and I think the handle is by browser as well and it gives a lovely quality of line. I'm going to start on the uh, tips of the spiky parts of the pineapple and I'm not going to be outlining it um, every single thing spike that's there. I want to give the impression that th this is where what's occurring um, and I'll let the human eye make up the rest of the story. And down further down here, I haven't included every single spiky thing, but it, it's, um, it's, I didn't include it in when I painted in the green, but I can include elements of it using ink. Um, I don't want to be adding too much here because I, I want it to be balanced the the watercolor that I, I have used on here which is quite delicate in some ways I suppose finish off the rest of the spikes so using the ink to emphasize the the spikes which are in front there we go I like that one I don't know about you sometimes I draw a very nice line and I get very, very happy about that. <laughs> I have to celebrate the small things like, oh, that's a lovely line. And the reason I'm using brown ink is, well, actually, it was something that a tutor told me in college when I was studying illustration. It's softer on the eye especially for um, the, the type of work that I'm doing here. You can use black ink if you want, um, but it's something that he suggested that I do when I was a student and I've pretty much done it since. And um, I do use black ink, but for different purposes, not, not for adding detail like this. And I think that the warmth of the brown really adds something to the oranges of this pineapple. 
So I've just added a few extra spikes that I didn't paint in, in green. That's really nice. And I think I need a few line work, uh, sorry, ink work spikes just here. I am so pleased to be um, introducing ink today. When I wrote the prompts, I, I had this thought that I would just use watercolour. Um, I will explain uh, at a later date why I was trying to gear myself up for that. Um, I don't often just use watercolour, so it, it's been a challenge for me the last few days. and part of the reason I, I like to take part in prompts is to challenge myself and, and do something a little bit different and move out of my comfort zone which um, I've decided not to do today <laughs> because pineapples are uh, just that little bit trickier and I have been up since half six. <laughs> So this is kind of like my get out clause. Um, I've, I've noticed that I've almost outlined this side of the pineapple and, I, and I, I don't think that needed to happen actually. Now this one, um, because it's not been cut in half, we've got the whole spiky thing going on. And in, in the past, I would try to draw every single spike in, every single uh, leaf. I would just drive myself bonkers trying to achieve that. So what you'll see me now do with the ink is just add suggestions of it. Um, there was actually a project that I did. It's for a smoothie company called Evolution Fresh, but it, uh, the packs were going to be sold in Costco. And because it was a food client, a branding client, as you can see, once this ink is down, it is down and there's nothing I can do about it. But the, the way that uh, food illustration projects work out, there's often a, a set of amendments or even two that need to be factored in. So what you saw me do before, I said, I, I'll, I'll scan that in and then I'll draw on top in Procreate in a, like a fake ink style. And they were really pleased with the results. And um, you, should, you can see that on my website. Now we're coming to the bits where uh, I've not added any green. So I'm just going to introduce some line work to to help the the viewer understand that there's a few more spikes behind there and down here it just gets a bit denser as well so i probably need a few more lines here as well we're now coming to the section where i really did used to drive myself completely bonkers <laughs> because i would try to draw in every individual little it's almost like a hexagonal kind of does something like that but I, I'm going to start with this outline here, this edge. I have to be mindful that I do not need to include everything. It is just an impression. I think I might just emphasize these shapes on this side of the pineapple because if I fill up this entire section, I, I think it would just spoil some of the, the beautiful effects I can see there. That's just a personal choice. Oh, this is looking really nice. I've got into a bit of a rhythm here. I had kind of worked myself up. <laughs> And I almost didn't include pineapple on the prompts because um, I have a bit of a, a mental block about them. I have illustrated pineapple, but I'm not sure if I've even done a recipe with pineapple, <laughs> an illustrated recipe. I've illustrated many things, 
So this might turn into an illustrated recipe later on. Oh, that's so nice. I think if I could just add a few more little spiky sections there, just, just to help the viewer understand that this is the edge. I'm really pleased with that. Let's have a really quick assessment of this because it is really important to take a step back and consider where we have learned something new, where we had our challenges. Mm. I kept it simple. I thought I'm not going to try and depict it in just watercolour. I need to bring in the ink because I wanted to pick out this detail using the ink and I simplified it even further because of that. So sighing with relief because I'm, I'm really pleased with the outcome.